lot of new details on Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door has got me wondering, could this game be in trouble? Let's discuss in today's Mood News Report. What did you lads think of that new patron credit? Hey, oh, pretty nice, right? Yeah, I'm pretty proud of that. Quick notice, I did a massive overhaul to every tier and pretty much everything to do with a patron page. So if you want to support what I do and get some exclusive coolness, is that a word, coolness, out of it? Like being in the patron credits like that, like you have your own little character, ooh. Be sure to check out the Patreon, pinned comment and description. It would really mean so much to me. Thank you so much. So let's circle back quickly to before September with the September Direct. Paper Mario wasn't looking very good for most fans. For the past three games, there's been crucial issues with everyone. Paper Mario Sticker Star, Paper Mario Color Splash, and even though it was a little bit better, Paper Mario Origami King all struggled to give us that craving we wanted with Paper Mario and Mario RPGs in general. Unfortunately, it's all just made that whole dig deeper. And when Alpha Dream went bankrupt and we didn't get any more Mario and Luigi games anymore, sad. It just meant sadness for, for Mario RPGs in general. But it seems like we're slowly crawling out of that evil hole of, of no Mario RPGs. Oh, what a sad world that is. No Mario RPGs. We're getting to the golden age, guys. We're, we're returning. We're returning. Nature is healing. Because... We got the Mario RPG remake, which surprised everyone. And then shortly after that, in the September Direct, we had a trailer for Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. And this wasn't just like in the middle of a Direct. No, this was the final closing game reveal for that Direct. This game is a big deal in Nintendo's eyes. And as I saw that reveal with my very own eyes, my brain started pelting. It's a disgusting way of des describing my brain. My brain started pelting, right? Um, wh what was I even saying? Why that word just threw me off entirely. Basically, I felt an aura. I felt an aura in that moment that Nintendo fans rejoiced. Nintendo fans were 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 healing. We were coming together, even all just being in our own living rooms, watching it on our own phones, on our own TVs. We felt a change together in that moment, I feel. Nintendo finally listened and gave us something which people have been craving for and asking for for literal years. Maybe even a decade with Paper Mario Sticker Star coming out. It was a day to celebrate. And honestly, since that, I still can't really believe it. I don't really think this game's coming out yet. Pinch me, it's not real. And just speaking from prior experience, I always heard about this game. I saw a couple Let's Plays here and there. And I even remember seeing it in like the old Simpsons magazines, which I what, uh, watched, which I read when I was like nine or eight. And I saw like, ooh, there were a bunch of old magazines about The Simpsons and they had like old GameCube ads in them. I think they were like my siblings, which I, I looked through. They were old ones, but I, I don't know. I thought I'd say that sort of a fun memory. God, I miss magazine art for games. Anyways, that's, that's irrelevant here. Let's get back to it. So yeah, for reaction, super positive across the board. However, there's a little something which has got me a bit anxious about this game, about this project of, of Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door getting remastered and remade from the ground up. And that's the fact that this might be a one and done situation. I don't know if we're gonna go back to the old Paper Mario style after this. And the main reason why I think that, and why we might revert to the origami sticker star style of Paper Mario, which would suck for a lot of us, is that this game, just if you compare Thousand Year Door to Origami King, just their trailers on YouTube, Origami King has a significant amount of views in comparison. It ju it's just like, not even a competition in terms of which one's more popular. And obviously Mario is popular. Mario's gonna sell regardless of what it is. But it makes me think, is there something about this game which just isn't appealing to the mass market compared to like the, the core Nintendo fans? Of course, we're excited for it. We're gonna play it and we're gonna love it. I think it's really cool that Nintendo made this game for everyone who's been asking for it, but that has me concerned. Is this game just for those who have been asking for it? Obviously, I've never played the game before and I'm excited to try it out, but I am also a hardcore Nintendo fan who talks about video games for a living. So I'm not really the best example in this situation. Is it just that people view it as a remake or an old game so they don't care? Is that it? Maybe? Let me know what you think in terms of that. But you know what? That's old news. All that stuff, that's happened before. That was sort of after the Direct. And that's sort of how I've been feeling in terms of the vibe since then. Thinking, is this just for fans? Is this just for us Nintendo fans to shut up? Or is this going to be a game for everyone and, and will be the future blueprint for future Paper Mario games going forward? And Mario RPGs in general. But then we had Mario Day 2024. 
And this Mario Day felt like the most action-packed Mario Day we've ever had from Nintendo. Not only did we get that Lego Mario Kart, which I talked about in my previous video. If you haven't watched that already, you should go and watch it. Not only did we get confirmation of a new Mario movie getting announced for April 2026, but we also got a little mini trailer with release dates for both Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door and Luigi's Mansion 2 HD. Both remakes had website launches, release dates revealed, and something a little bit controversial for some people, prices revealed. Now, Luigi's Mansion 2 is a whole other discussion, which maybe we could dive into. That game initially retailed at around $40, I think, for the 3DS. And so for this game to be a remaster of that initial game, $20 more, with no significant improvements seen yet, except for obviously it being in HD, understandably has some people concerned. This game just added $20 to its price tag for no significant reason? This is a scam! This is finance! Blah, 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 blah. Money, money, money. You know, I could, I could talk about that like that, but that's not what we're here for. That's a little more of a straightforward and understandable argument, but Paper Mario Thousand Year Duel is a lot more nuanced in this. So yeah, getting it out of the way, the game is $60 full price for Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. And unlike Luigi's Mansion 2 for the 3DS, Thousand Year Door on GameCube is impossible to find or buy, unless you're willing to pay upwards of $100 just for the game itself. Some people have been joking around saying that $60 for Paper Mario Thousand Year Door is kind of a steal, <laughs> which is a bit sad when you think about it, but also very funny and very true. But then you'd hear the argument, it's, this game is a 20-year-old GameCube title. $60 for that? Look at Metroid Prime Remaster. That game didn't retail for full price on Switch. Now, I do see that point, but also, Metroid Prime Remaster, as beautiful and incredible and smooth as that game was, it really didn't add any significant new features or new content, which it didn't really need. But still, many would argue that that game should have been priced at $60 for how good it was. The fact that since it is at $40, why is it in this game? But then you also look at another case study, because I think this is a lot more closer to Thousand Year Door, which is Mario RPG, right? Metroid is Metroid. That's not Mario. Mario remakes seem to be at $60, except for Mario vs. Donkey Kong, which was $50 instead. So then actually, hmm, it's getting a bit confusing here, isn't it? And that game included two new worlds, so hmm, it's a bit interesting, guys. It's a little bit interesting. Interesting. But sticking with RPGs, Mario RPG retailed for $60 and was a much older game than 20 years, like Thousand Year Door. And I think with the prices, the way I view it or the way I see in terms of the justification for them is just how much new content was created for it to exist. Not necessarily new content for that game, but new assets, new animations, new music. Mario vs Donkey Kong had some fantastic visuals, but at the same time, they were pretty simple for where $50 sort of justifies that price, I feel like. I think if that game was 60, it might have been a bit too much. But when you look at Mario RPG and compare it to the previous version, or when you look at Paper Mario of the Thousand Year Door, and you see how they've taken creative liberties with it, and just the massive jump visually from GameCube to now, and the new music tracks we're gonna get. Seeing the effort on display already just from the trailers alone, I can fully see why the price has been set as it is. However, what I think really justifies it is new features, new gameplay features for these said games. And as of Mario Day, there has been little blurbs and little sneaks and peaks sharing that the Thousand Year Door does have new features. We just don't know what they are yet as of today's recording. But if an old game adds new features or like a new mode or anything regarding that, I think that more than anything justifies it and sort of ends that conversation entirely. Like look at Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. That game easily crushes it being $60 because of all that new content you get with Bowser's Fury alongside the initial game. So although I can understand for Hmm, eyebrow raises at Luigi's Mansion 2. I think a lot more people are comfortable with this price for the Thousand Year Door and would justify it with all the things I've talked about so far. But again, this sort of applies to those people who are already in the Nintendo Zeitgeist Online and are already familiar with the culture of Paper Mario of the Thousand Year Door and what it represents. And so that still gets me a little bit nervous for the average schmo who looks at this game as, oh, Paper Mario? Wait, it's an old one. What? Why is it so expensive? I'm not gonna get it. Like, that's a bit of a concern for me, but hopefully, the fact that it doesn't have remaster or remake or anything attached to it and it just says Paper Mario of a Thousand Year Door, people are going to think this is a brand new Paper Mario game for those normies and people who aren't familiar with the release on GameCube. I'm just really crossing my fingers that this game does do well because as much as I'm excited to play this game for the first time and actually give it a go and see what all the hullabaloo is about, 
There's two things that make me excited about it more than actually playing the game. First, a Super Paper Mario remake. Come on, Nintendo. Give that to us. That's for superior game, really. I actually, I don't know if it is the superior game. That's just the one I played growing up, and I love that game to bits. And second, a brand new Paper Mario game, which still has the RPG and aesthetics of the Thousand Year Door. Because seeing just some new concepts for creatures and enemies and original party companions, the same way the Thousand Year Door did it, would be so so much fun to see. I really want to see how this format of a game gets improved and evolves from here. Because I really don't want us to be in a loop of developers having to force themselves to do what we already want them to do. Like, oh, we like this sort of Zelda game, give us this Zelda game. Oh, we like this sort of Paper Mario game, give us this Paper Mario game. So I don't necessarily want to see them step back and regurgitate what they've done before, because I feel like as a developer, that's probably not very fun to just like, oh, I'll do what everyone else wants. But it's more so is I want to see how that concept would have branched out in a different avenue. Like, oh, you went down this path in terms of making a new sort of creative idea. How about we retract down that tree and then we go up a different branch and see where that sort of gameplay aesthetic leads us to, or that sort of gameplay design, that, or that just that game design in general leads us down. Does that make sense? Does that tree analogy make sense? Hopefully it does. Anyways, guys, I think I've rambled enough. My consensus is I'm very excited for this game. I'm excited for the future and I just really hope it does well So it means we can get that future cool Paper Mario game and maybe we can get the Mario and Luigi RPGs Please I, I miss those come on. I know Alpha Dream went bye-bye, but it's it's so sad I just I love those games. Come on Bowser's inside story. Come on guys. It's like the best game ever made Anyways, I'll shut up now be sure to check out the patreon as I said earlier and with that Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. All right. Bye guys Bye.